Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Chase here bringing you the final devotion in our favorite series. And it just so happens to be the last time I'm going to be sharing a devotion online as these are coming to an end. What a long journey, huh? Hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the, the these favorites that I've shared. Hope you've gotten to know me a little bit better. And I appreciate you all sharing your favorite verses in the comments below. And you'll have one more chance right now to share your favorite passages, your favorite stories, and why in the comments below. I'm going to read a passage here that uh, has um, helped Leslie and I um, get to where we are today, right here with you all here at Griff City Vineyard. Um, this is Genesis 22, okay? And I'm going to read this passage. It's when Abraham is tested and is is called by God to sacrifice his, his only son, the promised son, Isaac. Um, I'm going to read this. I'm going to talk about this passage and then share a little bit about why um, currently this has meant so much to us over the last three three or so years in our life. Um, again, it, which has led us, thankfully, to here at Grove City Vineyard. But uh, here, this is Genesis 22. It says this, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. And God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early in the morning, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. The two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not lay anything on him. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Uh, just this incredible, incredible passage here uh, that has taken a whole new meaning on me and Leslie's uh, journey. Um, this is a story about Abraham's obedience, right? His willingness to do something that probably he really didn't want to do. Um, a lot of the, the Hebrews know this as the akedah, uh, which, which means binding. And it's just this really prominent, popular passage uh, th that they all kind of like refer to. And I think one that it's, it's a very uh, a popular story that, that, that you, that you read about in Sunday school, you talk about it. Um, and it's just this remarkable situation. Um, Isaac is the promised son. He, uh, the, he, he represents God's promise here. He represents God's faithfulness. He represents God's miraculous work. Uh, a symbol to Abraham and Sarah, Isaac is, and he he represents the future of Abraham's people. Don't forget just a few chapters earlier, God said, Abraham, your descendants will be as many as the stars, right? In the sand. And, and here God is saying, Abraham, go sacrifice your son that I promised, your son that all of this is going to be fulfilled and I need you to go sacrifice this. And Abraham doesn't complain. He doesn't say what? He doesn't say, God, you're crazy. He says, here I am. And he goes. And, and I just think this is remarkable. The, the obedience that Abraham shows, the, the faith that Abraham shows. I mean, listen to this. He says in verse 5, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. So right out of the gate, Abraham is demonstrating this faithfulness that, hey, God's going to take care of something. And we know that because at the very end, God's Abraham... Uh, names that place, God will provide Jehovah Jireh. It's where we get Jehovah Jireh from, God our provider, right? 
but but Abraham's actions here is something I want to kind of focus in on. Was Isaac becoming an idol to Abraham? We don't know. We don't know that. But what we do know is that Abraham received this, this difficult charge from God to go sacrifice his only son, and Abraham didn't. And it wasn't until Abraham had the knife up ready to sacrifice his son that God said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to save you and Isaac from hurt, from pain, from suffering. I'm going to take care of that for you. And uh, and this passage took a whole new light um, on me and Leslie's journey about uh, two and a half, almost three years ago. Uh, my previous church situation before I was here at Grove City Vineyard it was, was a very tremendously difficult time. <laughs> um, and there were just some situations and circumstances that were incredibly heartbreaking and very, very difficult. Um, and we were put in a situation where we were asked to do something that we really didn't want to do, that we didn't see ourselves doing, that I had had opportunities to do before that I didn't feel called to do, but yet we were approached and asked to do uh, something that we really didn't feel like God wanted us to do, but we wanted to uh, respect and love the church, so we took time to pray about it. We said, God, here we are. What what do you want? And we, we took two months to pray about this certain decision and this certain step that um, we never expected and never asked for. And, and we kind of felt like God was maybe leading us in that direction. Um, and I know this is super vague, uh, but I, I just, I just want, you, want you to hear kind of where we're at. Um, and so after a month of praying, we decided, well, hey, this is, you know, we, we haven't felt a direction to not do this. Um, you know, we care about the church and the people. So, so let, 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 let's figure this out. Let's try it. And in the moment that, that we said yes, um, God said no in this really, uh, really bizarre, unique way. Um, and so now we are like, okay, what's going on? What the heck? Like this, this wasn't, was this necessary? And so we're trying to navigate all of that. And um, it wasn't until a couple, uh, like about a week later when I was like, oh my goodness. Like I, I was replaying the situation in my head and, and the story just, just came to life to me and Leslie in a whole new way. And, and we truly believe that it was just a, a, a test of obedience for us where God was wanting to know if me and Leslie were willing to go to a place that we really didn't want to do. Like it's, it's not, not our passions to go to a place that we nece didn't necessarily feel like we had been praying, like wanting for this thing to happen. Um, but we wanted to obey God and be where and, and follow God's will. So, so we said yes to God in that moment, and and it ended up uh, not being kind of what uh, what the church wanted to do after all. And and so we we just we read this story and we we're like, oh my goodness, God, um, we we do believe in you and we do trust in you and we do. Uh, like even when things don't make sense, even when we are trying to discern uh, what direction you want us to go. And we felt like that was uh, the answer that you have given us, this kind of like thing that we really didn't want to do. Uh, but God, we felt like in that moment you had called us to do that, where that was taken away from us. And really that had saved us from heartache, from trouble, from stress, from harm. Um, and and we are just so grateful that that God did provide for us um, and, uh, and so we, we read this passage and it is just so personal to us in this moment. Um, so much so that I had one of my friends commission a painting. I love art. I don't know anything about art. I just love art. And, uh, so I don't know if you've seen this behind me or in my office. This is the Ram in the Thicket that we had commissioned one of my really good friends up in uh, Brooklyn, New York to paint, um, for us to, just help us remember that, that God does provide and that God just calls us to be obedient, to be faithful, to, um, to, to trust him in all of his ways and that he, he really knows what's best. And um, it is my prayer that, that you all show that same obedience, that you all show that same willingness to, um, to trust God, even in those situations where maybe it's not going to be fun, maybe 
it's going to be something that's going to be like difficult, but but God is there for you. That God does provide. And um, so, and just in wrapping up this like favorites series here, this this passage is um, taking on a whole new life for us. Um, and if it not been for for that moment for the obedience that thankfully Leslie and I were able to share um, and kind of walk through. Um, we would not be here at Grove City Vineyard right now, and, and we are just so grateful for this church, this family, and this community. Um, but uh, but yeah, Genesis 22, um, as we're kind of wrapping up this favorites series here, um, has taken on a whole new life for us as we were um, transitioning out of our old church context to go to Grove City Vineyard here. Um, we are just grateful that that led us here and um, that God does provide for all of us, um, no matter the situation. And, and I pray that that you all show that same obedience that Abraham showed in this moment and uh, that that uh, you just continue to allow the word of God to speak to you in every, situ- every situation. It's been a ton of fun bringing you these devotions um, and I can't wait to worship with you all on Sunday morning. Hope you guys have a great week. Take care. Bye.